Okay, Anton. Anton is here. Yes, hello. Good hello. morning. Good evening. You can share your your screen if you want. We are going to start uh, your presentation. Okay, so I can share my screen and slides. Yeah, please. Okay. So let me go ahead. Okay, so do you see my screen? Yes, we uh, can see it. I, I assume somebody should introduce Anton, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yes, it, it, it's uh, it's me. Uh, well, we are going to start uh, this track with the presentation of cognitive architecture for decision making based on brain principle programming and that will be presented by Anton Kolonin. Please. Hello to everyone and thank you for <clears throat> giving me an opportunity to present my work and work of my colleagues to the BICA conference. And I'm going to talk about the cognitive architecture for decision making supposed to be used for development of decision support systems. And this cognitive architecture is based on the principles of brain activity. We can call them brain principles programming. And this cognitive architecture at the same time is relying on formal mathematical methods, such as task-driven approach. We call it TDA, semantic probabilistic inference. We call it SPI, probabilistic formal concepts. We call them PFC and theory of functional systems, we call, we call it TFS. So let's start with the principles. Uh, let's imagine that we are closing our eyes and someone put something in our hand. And we try to guess what's that. So we, we feel the shape. We try to press the object and we feel the, whether it's uh, hard or soft. We try to move to the, our fingers and uh, feel the surface. Then we also realize the weight. And these different perceptions of different modalities generate some complex uh, picture with, uh, and uh, we can generate different hypotheses and different theories. What's that? And in this point, the principle of generation of complexity, complexity is acting. So different theories with different properties are populating our brain and different segments of the cortex of our brain. And then we are trying to map one theory against another and the properties associated with one theory with properties associated with another theory. Like for example, we may think that that's a pool ball uh, but then we think, okay, pool ball should be hard, uh, heavy, and that's not heavy. Then we can think, maybe that's an orange, orange, and then the orange should be uh, uh, should be soft when you push on it, but it's not soft. It's it, it's hard. So then th there is some interference coming in our brain, and uh, the processes and principles that are uh, leading this interference are called uh, as we call them the principles of relationship so we relate different theories and different properties different objects and different features of this object one to other to see which one corresponds to which and the other principle is principle of locality distribution so uh, recognition of the object in space of one particular modality like shape or weight or color or smell is uh, done locally in particular segment of the cortex but at the same time, these different uh, activities are concurrently running in our brain. So we are trying to re recognize the object in different modalities at the same time. And then principle of relationship back uh, tries, makes it possible to uh, relate each to other, right? And at the same, at, at, at the end, the principle of heaviness acts. So due to the principle of heaviness, the theory, which is less contradicting to uh, the properties and uh, to our perceptions is winning and we are coming to decision. What's that? And then the principle of approximation to a sense comes into the play because let's say we have decided that that's an apple and that's an apple, but because our eyes were closed, we and in our life we have seen green apples most of the time, we approximate so the real apple in our hands to some theoretical apple which is green and then we open our eyes and see that that's a red apple but 
that's not a big deal we still were able to guess that that's an apple so these principles uh, can be actually expressed and implemented uh, in a few different ways historically in terms of the evolution these principles are implemented in our brain and you can find different neophysiological processes that are corresponding to these five principles for example uh, the uh, relationship and locality distribution principles can be found uh, in the uh, design uh, such, uh, of the consciousness pro proposed by tanoni the heaviness is uh, something that you can relate with principles of letter and inhibition and winner takes all policies of decision making but in our work we are trying to build uh, the system based on the formal mathematical methods and all of these methods are based on what we call task driven approach suggested by mathem uh, um, Siberian mathematicians and the task driven approach that whenever you want to have a decision making process system implemented for particular domain be it some business application or Medicare or uh, some technological process, you need to define the problem in some operational ontology or some uh, operational space uh, where the operational ontology may be, a, 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 may be consistent of sensory space of your technological process or just set of predicates that are described in the business rules. And once you can specify the area of your application in terms of the um, domain ontology, you can also specify the criteria for goal achievement. Like uh, in order to have the goal uh, achieved or a task solved, you can assert that certain properties of certain attributes uh, in or relationships of certain properties with uh, uh, certain attributes uh, or um, of one objects correspond to the other properties of the other objects. So some subgraph in this domain specific ontology might be corresponding to the state of the technological process or your uh, activity where the goal or task is solved. Okay, and then in terms of the predicates describing this domain specific ontology you can apply uh, semantic probabilistic inference which does logical inference on the predicates building this operational ontology and then the inference is done probabilistically so that's not just um, uh, tra traditional prolog style uh, logistic induction or deduction we count for probabilities and any model that we can describe in probabilities we can handle with this probabilistic uh, inference moreover besides the probabilistic inference engine uh, the other part of the system is uh, probabilistic formal co concepts framework which is an extension of the well-known formal concept analysis design but we account for probabilities and in fact whenever we discover some uh, concept which is like flying birds right so there are birds that are not flying and there are uh, f uh, flying uh, objects that are not birds but once we identify the concepts of flying and birds we can also identify some logical relationships between the objects uh, <coughs> that uh, represent this uh, <coughs> concept and the properties of these objects in some logical rules and these rules are exactly the semantically probabilistic rules that are that can be inferred by uh, semantic probabilistic engine and finally whenever we can uh, apply this uh, semantic probabilistic inference applied to task driven approach and potentially involved in formal concept analysis in some real processes we can at any point of time whenever we make some decision we can de uh, generate the action that we have uh, direct toward the world but we can also generate expectations that we anticipate based on our action towards the world and then when we get some positive or negative uh, feedback from the world we can compare our expectations and the actual uh, reaction of the, from the environment and based on the difference between our expectations and the real feedback from the environment we can correct our actions either we consolidate the positive experience or we rather uh, destroy uh, the some uh, probabilities and uh, de decrease some probabilities that were used to cause this action and that's then the uh, ground for and basics of theory of functional systems by Piotr Anohin 
So let's move towards the uh, architecture that we are suggesting. <clears throat> let's imagine some real case where we have some uh, manager in a business. Uh, let's let's say it will be sales manager which takes care about the sales and it it has the system which logs the history of sales. So every sale or every business event in the enterprise is logged as instance some object with some processes and then all instances are going to the probabilistic formal concept subsystem which also forwards these instances to semantic probabilistic engine and semantic probabilistic engine uh, uh, inference creates the rules associating different properties and then if we have some if we are finding some uh, reliable and repetitive uh, configurations of the properties we can uh, learn some formal concepts uh, performance supervised learning uh, so to speak and then these formal capsules are stored in the uh, database as invariants and rules that are used to infer presence of these uh, invariants are stored in the probabilistic rules database and then we act uh, we implement the principle of approximation to essence because we are uh, approximating to the essence multiple instances merging them into some invariant then let's say there is a real trouble and uh, there is an event locked uh, saying that the sales are falling and the goal the manager has the goal to have profits rather than uh, fall of sales and there is a request to the system what to do so here is what is happening now <clears throat> of again we have the principle of approximation to the essence so event of sales falling is causing invariance corresponding to such situation of sales falling and then there are rules involved that are connecting potential uh, falling of sales with possible outcomes that can follow uh, such situation and which might be potentially associated either with increasing the profits or decreasing the profits and then we have uh, all the principles of generation of complex complexity relationship and locality distribution acting all together so we generate and uh, multiple theories and relate them each to other in given con context at some point when the most strong theory wins and appears most re relevant to current context and due to the principle of heaviness there is a recommendation directed to the user and at the same time there is expectation is directed to the uh, module of theory of functional systems and then when the feedback comes back and the sales actually grow then we identify the invariant of uh, of increased uh, profit and this increase of the profit is uh, matched by the theory of functional system which which has uh, to compare the expectations about growing sales and their actual so, so, so event of profit and the positive experience is consolidated in in respect to the rules that were most relevant to the in the in given context due to the principle of heaviness all in one here is the cognitive architecture that we are uh, implementing so in the middle you see uh, the uh, kernel what we call cognitive kernel based on uh, semantic probabilistic inference probabilistic formal concepts there are functional systems and um, task driven approach where sim uh, probabilistic formal concepts is uh, creating the formal co concepts or invariants out of instances stored in the cognitive database and binds them with semantic probabilistic rules semantic probabilistic inference is associating uh, and supplying these invariants with rules proving the validity of these uh, formal concepts or invariants and also semantic probabilistic inference infers uh, forecasts and directs this forecast to, to, to the user and to the theory functional systems which evaluates successfulness of the uh, behavior based on the task driven approach and further uh, <clears throat> adjusts the rules stored in the uh, rule base probabilistic rule base and of course uh, all this uh, data is uh, map is being mapped to specific uh, subject domain ontology in terms of the metadata with types attributes and classifiers so in order to make sure that we are, are on the right path we have uh, created uh, uh, different applications models of the different applications under some unified ontology usable to cover different specific domains and for example we have created the application for psychotherapy uh, psychotherapy domain 
uh, for custom relationship management domain and for a project management domain ontology. For example, for uh, psychotherapy, you can see the same uh, way how you can handle uh, how you can apply these five principles of brain activity, but you have just different ontology, right? So instead of shape and weight, we have the state, psychotype of patient, cognitive distortions that patient is uh, suffering from, uh, social situations which is causing such cognitive distortions, emotions that are uh, <clears throat> given problems to person, and then we are handling not the physical properties, we are handling the patterns of speech found in the words of patient, and then using the same way uh, uh, the same process as I described in the very beginning from the single sentence of the patient we can identify the theory or which is diagnosis that we need to treat in this current case it's anxiety uh, anxiety feeling emotion uh, connected with catastrophizing cognitive distortion because of the person is being fired and uh, in this example you can consider three simple three-dimensional space so here is the point of the patient in this, this three-dimensional semantic space or being fired uh, catast catastrophizing and anxiety and then the task driven approach suggests us that the uh, formal task is to move patient from point a to point b and the point B is the point where we have, which have different properties. So being fired might be still in place because person was fired. So we, we can't do anything about that, but we can have some ther 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 therapeutic uh, uh, action towards the patient. So we remove the emotion of anxiety and uh, distortion of catastrophizing. And here is example of the, we can actually map uh, these interactions, diagnostic interactions and treatment interactions to particular flows of speech directed from patient and uh, for, to uh, neurotherapist, uh, psychotherapist and from psychotherapist to the patient. And here you can see the, uh, how particular patterns in the speech are being mapped to particular concepts in the in ontology that is underlying the application. And uh, also we have some more detailed uh, description of this um, uh, process in our paper and also our paper covers few different applications uh, like um, uh, for customer relationship management and uh, business uh, and uh, <clears throat> project management. So if you are interested with, with, with about this work, you are welcome to read our preprint about brain principle per principles programming, which is more fundamental part of it. And um, here is the preprint of the paper that we have submitted to this conference where we have more detailed uh, description on the, uh, our cognitive architecture and uh, business applications. Thank you. Thank you very much. If someone has some questions. I have a question. Yes, uh, Ricardo. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, to me. Hi. Uh, my question is, uh, do you have this system uh, available for someone to test, for example, in GitHub or in a re public repository where we can take a look on the uh, the physical implementation of it, or, or it's uh, just in a private uh, um, uh, domain? Okay, thank you. Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, let me see if I have. Well, unfortunately, I don't have email on this slide. So, but uh, you, can, you I, I can get you my email uh, in chat, or you can find it out with organizers. So. Uh, short answer that we don't have this system uh, in the most of the system is not available in public repositories. So there are some applica applications for semantic probabilistic inference, for probabilistic formal concepts, for theory of functional systems, and there are applications and also for task driven approach. But all these applications are not open source for the moment. There are some open source developments like uh, experimental uh, results. But uh, this is in hands of one of our colleagues. Uh, one of uh, so, if you send me email, I can uh, give you get you in touch with uh, the person who owns this code. But it had to be sorted out on one by one basis because no, have, not everything is in open source. Do, do you have a plan for making it available in the future or not? Well, uh, so far, 
I don't aware so I I myself is more on theoretical side so the people who are working on technical application or implementation of this they might consider making it open source at some point but uh, it's better be checked with them so so far I'm not sure about these plans so mostly technical implementation of the system is in hands of the Eugeny Vitaev and his team and uh, it better be checked uh, with him. We are relying on his work here. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. Uh, someone else have uh, a question? Okay, I have a question. Um, and it's, it's very nice to see the formalization of uh, some brain functions. However, uh, all the time I can see that uh, in the formalization, we can miss some important uh, variables. Uh, uh, can you say something about the drawbacks uh, has to your, your formalization or not? Uh, or, or, or do you think it is completely okay? It's enough. Uh, well, uh, okay. I, I can tell you, uh, so from my view, uh, the major problem of this, uh, of the design that I have been presented uh, today, including these formal systems, is um, there is a still need to prove that it, that it scales well on the massive data, on the large scale, uh, large scale vol volumes of data, like it has been shown by modern um, uh, networks based on the transformers and deep neural networks, which uh, scale well with large amounts of data. So far, most of experiments that have been run uh, within the presented ap approach were run on either small or I would say uh, moderate uh, scales of data. And uh, we are interested in applying it to larger scales of data to see that it scales well. So that's the major problem uh, and issue that I see so far. Okay. Another question that I have is, uh, do you use ontologies to represent at least a part of a context, isn't it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so uh, in, in, in that way, uh, you ought to create as many ontologies as domain of application you want to, to use, uh, uh, to work on. Uh, so uh, is that correct or not? And if, okay. if uh, that yeah, is yeah. correct, so, so. Uh, how you can, uh, uh, how you are planning to, to normalize or to um, create, uh, go in the direction of a general ontology or or a um, unique uh, um, representation of a context? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I get your question, so let me uh, answer and you tell me whether I get it or not. So first of all, uh, in order to do any of these, uh, for apply any of these formal methods, you need ontology. Or you, you, or you can call it semantic model because there are some discussions of if there is what you, what some people mean different things under the semantic model and ontology, we think these are synonyms. So you need some uh, structured representation of some subject domain in terms of the concepts and relationships, yeah. more abstract concepts, less abstract concepts, relationship between them. So you need to describe it, okay? And these concepts might be either uh, completely uh, tangible or uh, labelable, like uh, a ship, <laughs> a, a road, uh, a, a port, a device, <laughs> a person, a, a human person to person relationship, right? A business process, or they may be just corresponding to particular, uh, I don't know, pixels or frequencies. Right, so if you want to use apply semi probabilistic engine to speech recognition, you can describe every uh, pitch uh, on the uh, frequency domain as a predicate, and the uh, <laughs> volume on each particular pitch will be uh, <laughs> corresponding to value of this predicate. So that's wide definition of ontology. That's on one hand, and then once you define this, you can solve any problem using the, this this approach. On the other hand, 
uh, in real applications we anticipate that some complex domains might not have to be described in terms of ontology uh, from top to bottom like for example part of the system might be uh, called what we call oracle uh, which just uh, does some recognition of some properties using uh, it might be using uh, some neural networks or deep neural networks and it can output higher level uh, uh, properties or features uh, out of the binary or multimedia objects and then you operate with your with that semantic make uh, formalism with higher level objects uh, so that's uh, what's how it works uh, i'm not sure if i got your answered your question Yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, what uh, what I see is that uh, we need to have a, a a way to create a context. Yes, uh, once we have a context, we can work in in different uh, areas. Yes, but we need to to create to to yes to create a context uh, uh, that is um suitable for a task a specific task that i think you are working or replacing the creation of that context by um an ontology so you need different uh, ontologies uh, one ontology for each domain once you have the ontology you can work in that domain isn't it Okay, okay, now I think I get your question. Okay, so let's say uh, I will give you, so, so, so both, uh, so there are two things. First of all, let's say we want to create two different applications, uh, like, uh, like here. You want to create application for uh, uh, psychotherapy and you want to create application for custom relationship management. And then what we do, and we actually did it, we created two completely different ontologies which are both based on some unified upper layer ontology but yeah. uh, still these ontologies are different and they are created at the design phase of the application so that's one thing right so if you have designed psycho ontology for psychotherapy then application based on that might never be used for customer relationship management but still within the psychotherapy uh, activity as well as in within the customer relationship management activity, you still able to figure out different situations, different situations. Like for example, uh, if the uh, markets are going down, then uh, you need uh, one way to increase the sales. And if the market is going, is going up, then you need another way to increase the sales right and then for example you might have uh, experience in the system uh, increasing uh, the sales in upcoming or downcoming downgoing markets and in both cases you might figure out that different measures are needed to uh, handle the sales situation okay and then these two uh, typical markets like upside market and downside market they might be considered as different contexts and then the system should be able and uh, theoretically it is able to learn these different uh, contexts and these contexts are what we call invariants so in the course of the operations the system is described that there are that there are goods there are prices there are customers there are, there are vendors so these are the parts of the ontology that system has to deal with but it is not uh, it doesn't have built-in notions of the upside market and downside market but it is able to learn these proper kinds of the market due to the course of the unsupervised learning and uh, store them in the database is invariance and then this invariance can be further uh, reviewed by the uh, human administrator or analyst uh, in the system and that human might actually label this found invariance like okay so this invariant corresponds to <laughs> in a bull market and this particular invariant corresponds to uh beer market uh so did they did they answer this question yes 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 uh, obviously i i have more questions but uh, we have no more time so thank you very much uh, for this you. for your presentation